My granny used to say that all the time. Yeah. 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 She drank a lot, though. She <laughs> does. I love you, granny. Stay strong. <laughs> Greetings, movie fans. You're all very welcome to The Big Review Ski with Omniplex Cinemas and my Omnipass. My name is Owen Doherty, and I'm delighted to be joined by two sexy Halloween hunks Ooh. this week. Ooh. I was going to say this year. This year. Well, uh, yeah, well, it's technically it's true. We're only good looking for this week, and then the rest is just bang average. Yeah. Spookily attractive. Spooky. Yeah. Take, take a look currently? at the pair of them. Like, like, like a witch's curse or something like that. Just turn this into Yeah, it's hunks. like a reverse. It's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. Kiss us and we turn back into frogs. It's not. It's not great. I don't actually think either of you are sexy or handsome. Like I was just kind of joking for the intro. Well, he lasted about ten seconds this week. Yeah, but I didn't expect both of you to believe it so much. We were. We you were went just... in hard on it. Like well, anyway, it's look, Halloween. It's a week look, of magic. It's Halloween. Yeah, Happy you know. Halloween, everybody. Um, we've done wonders with the set. A big congratulations to oh, it's Ian. Different. Yeah, we've got <laughs> our face hugger up here. A cardboard witch's hat. Yes. We there's like an orange shawl Fuzz. thing, ectoplasm. Who knows? Some green spiders. This is my favourite though. Little, look at the little, little cute pumpkin. pumpkin, and he's got a little candle in his head. Mm. We're gonna call this because Justine's not here this week. We're gonna call this one Justine. Did you carve that yourself? I didn't actually. I stole it off somebody's desk and work. So pumpkin Stafford. Watching, <laughs> yeah, pumpkin Stafford. There you go. Uh, it's a little health and safety hazard because can't ride it quick. Can't ride it. No. Um, where were we? Happy Halloween. <laughs> yeah. So welcome Films. to the movie show. Films, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, as I was saying, you two, you are, no, you are handsome. I take that back. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Once you admitted that, I mean, we got it's that hard, It's hard to admit. Yeah. But anyone who sees you, like, you know, they might think, oh my God, they're utterly horrifying and terrifying. Fair. Especially around this time of year. But once you get to know the two guys over a number of years, uh, you, realize, syndrome, <laughs> <that's yeah. laughs> you realize that uh, they're big softies at heart. Uh, like to the, stay puff marshmallow, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you do both hide deep, dark secrets. Sure. I'll never tell what the bodies are. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like us uh, to know your deepest, darkest secrets, please get in touch with us at Big Review Ski on Twitter, uh, on Joe Facebook and Instagram as well. Or if you see us in the street, somebody... Somebody was cycling past Rory the other day and shouted, hello, Rory. Cycling the wrong way on a one-way street. Oh, was that true? Yep. Right and I had my headphones on and just seen a hand waving and looked over. And That's all the, that's all the shout-outs hello, he Rory. gives. You're actually going to have them tell your secrets now. Yeah. So Plus, it's going to go from your name to secrets to, like, stalking. It's going to be fun. Real fun. I, it's something to look forward to. Yeah. Maybe they'll show up with, a, like, an axe at your door and knock down and, then like, smash into your door. Say, you know, I hope that doesn't there. happen. I, yeah. I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, do get in touch with us. And don't forget to subscribe as well. And if you do see Paul uh, or Rory or Justine or myself in the street, just shout. Preferably Rory. Yeah. Yeah. Stay away from us. I want to sp no, I want to spread the street love. <laughs> <laughs> Spreading the street love here in the Big Review Scheme. Um, now it's time for the big question on the Big Review Scheme. For this week's big question, it's over to Paul Murr. It is indeed. And I mentioned the aforementioned acts. This week we've got Dr. Sleep coming out, the follow-up to The Shining, which for my money has probably one of the most famous weapons in film history, which is obviously the axe, which uh, Jack Nicholson, Jack Torrance uses to smash down the place and uh, it utter the iconic here's Johnny. Uh, so on that note, yeah, what's your favorite weapon in cinematic history? So this is a good question, and it I is honestly, I like, know a weapon like oh, an angry uh, person or angry L one that we would say in Ireland. Oh, she's, oh, she's, she's not a weapon. weapon. Okay, weapon. gotcha. So not that. Oh, I better yeah. change. <laughs> better change all of my answers. <laughs> um, so the thing with this one is. Something popped into my head straight away. Yep. And so I just, I was like, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to look for anything else. I'm just, I'm happy with this answer. One answer. One answer. Oh. Well, <laughs> technically, uh, technically one. Oh, no. um, That'd be a weapon. But, but before, before that, Paul, what did, what did you go for? I went for, I think it featured on the show before in a different context, which is a moment from a trailer, which I absolutely loved. It was, uh, I think from around 99? the reveal of Dark Maul through the doors and then he ignites his double-bladed red lightsaber. I just thought it was the coolest shot. Uh, not to, that's the same, that's not even the coolest film, but just that weapon because obviously the lightsaber is synonymous with the original Star Wars trilogy. You're thinking, oh, you're so used to just seeing one blade, like it's the coolest weapon of all time. Like, 
It's two. It's yeah. twice as cool. Like, you weren't the only one that was excited about the whole world lost there. Because, yeah, you said the film came out in 99, so you'd have been looking at the trailer around 98. Uh, so really early days of the internet, so you wouldn't have that. It'd wait five minutes for it to load <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. But everybody in school was talking about, oh, my God, did you see? Like, he presses the button, then it goes again. I was like, ah. I actually had the tie of that as well, the double blade The double lightsaber. lightsaber. Yeah, yeah. I think no, it's, it's a phenomenal, lightsaber. phenomenal weapon. Uh, okay, there's a little clip of Darth Maul in action in the world's greatest Star Wars film, The Phantom Menace. What? <laughs> We'll handle this. We'll take the long way. We gotta do something, R2. The music in that scene as well, Jewel of the Fates, yeah. phenomenal. And I love the fact that one of the good things from the prequel trilogy is that they tried to up it every time. So Count Dooku had the curved blade. The curved blade, and then yeah. General Grievous had like like six multiple blades, blades yeah, yeah. that he had taken off. And now dead you Jedi, got dead Kylo, eye. Kylo Ren with the the mm. guards. So they are trying to reinvent it because we were thinking we're so used to just seeing the one type of lightsaber. Yeah. But um, no, it was really cool. And a character I think didn't get full desert to start more. Even in Solo, I would have liked to see him maybe kick on a bit. Definitely. Well, you can see they're definitely gearing up to have him if there was a solo two duo. Yeah. Then, um, no? A duet. Mm. Technically. But no, it's fine. Okay. It's grand. Well, he would have maybe been in it more. <laughs> yeah, no, I would, I would have looked forward to that. The other thing about Jewel of the Fates uh, by John Williams there in the soundtrack, I always remember when I was playing Championship Manager in a PC years ago after the film came out, uh, me and my brother, if we got like to the final of any kind of competition, and I remember bringing Inverness Caledonian Thistle to the final. Super Cali go <laughs> ballistic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the, um, uh, we were playing Genoa in whatever version of the Champions League was at the time, and you would stick on uh, Jewel of the Fates basically just to make it really exciting. So you'd be mm. sitting there with like a wee glass of milk. Ah, we're a sports show now, Rory. Yeah, what a rush. Did you love playing Championship Manager whenever no. you were? No. Did you no. take, and where'd you take Inverness Caledonian Thistle? Wherever they wanted to go. <laughs> That's my uncle challenged me and my brother and my cousin to all take Inverness Caledonian Thistle as far as we could. Champions League final, I lost 1 0 to Genoa. Though, so. That's what, apparently that's the plot for the next Star Wars film as well. I, I can't wait. That's going to be unbelievable. Um, so, that's a great shot. <laughs> Jill of the Fates. Uh, Dark Maul's, Dark Maul's double bladed red lightsaber. Okay, Roy, what did you go for? Um, Sean of the Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I. My, uh, yeah, I think I did the exact same thing. I was like, what what weapon did I see used <clears throat> in a film? And my immediate reaction was, I want I want to fire that <gasps> right <Yeah>. now. <laughs> uh, and I was kind of torn between two from the exact same film okay. as well. So the one I went with was the mech suit from District 9. Oh, nice. Oh, very uh, cool. It was a very, very... Like close run because the other one was, do you know the? It's kind of a weird kind of sonic boom gun. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. just yeah. kind of bops people out. <laughs> <laughs> Bop. Uh, but I just I love the 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 thing where he catches all the bullets and then it's mm. like, and yeah. just <laughs> shoots them all straight back. This I was like, like you're, you're like your man from Police Academy I'm with like the side effects today. Hey. Listen, that's me. Uh, so what, then, noise, what noise does this gun make again? It goes. <laughs> <laughs> when he shoots all the bullets back. Okay. And I thought that was I thought that was pretty cool. I was convinced you were gonna go for the, the Ripley the loader or the, oh, pl or the flame yeah. tower. See, I was convinced you loader, were gonna go for that. The loader isn't really I did think I thought long and hard about this. The loader isn't really a weapon. Yeah, that's true. It, it's actually just a it's like a forklift. Mm. Yeah. Um I but, almost did go for her pulse rifle because just okay. just the sound of that is is intensely good. <laughs> How does that sound? No, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to belittle the awesome sound of the pulse rifle. But no, it's just I remember seeing all the stuff being used in District Nine. I was like, and it's it's the build up to it because he's like a weakling, and then he's like beat yeah. down and beat down. It's like, well, we're going to give him a super suit now. It's yeah. like, yeah, go on, weakest is that name? Weakest in the film? Oh, his name, and I think yeah. I remember. But like, and as he, he just discovers unleashes that carnage. 
that yeah. he's able to use them and that his, his genetics or his DNA have been Holmes. adapted into it and then yeah. he's able to use the gun. Yeah. It's, like, it's so good. Oh, it's a cracker. So this is a wee clip of the mech suit. Yes. In District 9. to beat that oh sorry okay <laughs> Why, what's wrong with prawns it's not like seafood no fair enough <laughs> good in a cocktail um, though so that's another great shout I don't it. like prawn cocktails what? but I do like what prawn cocktail like? flavour crisps is it the sauce I don't know what it is I don't care for it it's delicious what about, king, what about king prawns doing the garlic and they're king fried prawn the cocktail flavoured crisps yeah okay. yeah I like those yeah <laughs> I'm all about those so uh, District 9 uh, Phantom Menace this is good this is a week. I'm concerned. No, it's it's grand. Any we'll weapons and showgirls? <laughs> I picked something. I mean, uh, well. Is sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> um, Those heels you could use. My my film is from 2002. Now you said Rory uh, just a wee second ago about you didn't pick the the loader in mm. Aliens because it's not technically a, a weapon. Mm. No, yeah, no. Um, it's like it's like it'd be like using a car. Yeah. It's like yeah. a car yeah. that you used to I think the only th from isn't there like a semi like tiny little flamethrower that's built into it, it. That's, that's the only like thing. A, yeah. That's like a blowtorch. Yeah. More yeah. Than... Well, mine technically isn't a weapon. Oy. It's used for other uh, day to day activities. It's gonna go over like the snow globe in Citizen Kane or something like <laughs> yeah. or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what I went for, yeah, two thousand and two film starring Matt Damon. It's the first of the Bourne trilogy, oh, uh, nice. the Bourne Identity. It's the fight in Paris. Did you pick the pencil. Or the, the magazine. Pen. Oh, the yeah. pen. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I went for. He's in the Parisian apartment. Hasn't a ball day where he is. What he's up to. He's there with Frank <laughs> and Patenta. And the first asset that comes after him bursts in through the window. And, uh, and leaves through the window. And leaves through the window as <laughs> For well. no reason yeah, whatsoever. I know it's the funniest like, <laughs> way he falls down. Like, he doesn't yeah. use his legs at all. Yeah. Like, um, but in this particular fight, because uh, you're still getting that idea of just who Jason Bourne is and what he's all about. And he's already escaped from the embassy and done in that brilliant shot as he's climbing down the wall. And just the way he uses his brain like to figure out uh, how to get out of certain situations. And he uses like the red bag out of the bin mm. as a little backpack. Or the first time you see him use his skills uh, with the guards in the park as he's sleeping on the bench, those things. But this is his first one-on-one -on -one fight with one of the other, uh, one of his fellow assets. The wee lab produces this tiny wee blade and again, we'll hear it in the clip now, but you hear all the brilliant, like, <laughs> those kind of uh, sound effects. Sorry, I'm stealing your sound effect gig I here. I don't as care well. for what you do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You should but, just do a show to sound effects. Yeah, but at one point, uh, Matt Damon backs onto like an office table and he's frantically kind of scrabbling around. Uh, and he grabs uh, the first thing he can find, which is a biro pen, and he takes off the lid. And then he just subsequently, like, Murders the crap out of the book. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't technically, but uh, beats the crap out of him uh, using this pen. A, mm. a lot of pain. Your man's um, like impervious, like yeah, that's it. So he just pulls it, he he just pulls it back out. Pulls mm. it out. So uh, this is a clip of Jason Bourne slash Neil Webb slash Matt Damon uh, doing his thing with a pen in slash Bourne Will Hunting. <laughs> slash good, great Will Hunting. Yeah. <laughs> Open that. Open that. Tell me what's inside. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Hey, uh, what do you do? Give me kiss. Oh my god. Let's fix you here. May I visit? Oh. Answer me. Who are you? He's got my picture. Right, this is so uh, so exist. No, 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 no. I don't know. How? Where do you get this? How do you get my picture? Where do you get 
do this. I'll do this. You stay there. Stay there. The thing I love about the Bourne trilogy, mm. and I ignore the other, well, there were two more then after yeah, that, one with Jeremy four. Renner and then one with Matt Damon again. Mm. Yes. But that original brilliant trilogy, um, which is just superb. In the same way, Paul, as you said, they upped the stakes with each of the lightsabers, mm. double blade, curved blade, multiple blades. Um, they do that kind of everyday object used by Matt Damon as an unbelievable weapon. So you got the pen and then in Supremacy you have... Detail, isn't it? No, he rolls up the magazine oh, in yes, the house. Yes and fights the acid in the house. And then the third one is like a, a tea towel, like face cloth type mm. thing that he just finds in a bathroom. And he uses that to hit your man. And it's just, it's brilliant. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> <laughs> like in the shower. We can all He's do like, that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so no, uh, absolutely loved I those weapons. I enjoy that in the decades of cinema history, <laughs> of <laughs> weapons, you went with a pen. I just love pens. <sighs> You, you stay back, I swear to God. I'm not afraid to use this thing. I love that, in the, down, over, I love that in the years of this show, jokes. Owen has settled for one answer. Yeah. No, I, I mean, kind of said three. There's the magazine <laughs> and there's the t yeah, you, as well. You did, yeah. 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 yeah, but like, all right. I think all things <laughs> considered, I, I, I would fancy Rory's mech suit to, in that fight between a pen a lightsaber and a well, mech suit. Well, you know what they say, <laughs> pen is mightier than a mech suit. Yes. That is, I love it. My granny used to say that all the time. Yeah. 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 She drank a lot, though. <laughs> she <laughs> does. I love you, granny. Stay strong. Um, no. Where do you go from there? <laughs> now it's time for the big trailer on the big review scheme for this week's big That's trailer. That's where you go. <laughs> yeah, it's over to Rory Cash and... Oh, yeah. Take it. Uh... Well, considering it's Halloween week, I thought it would be a good idea to do something a little bit scary. <laughs> so, own, own shivering right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please, no. I can handle it. I'm all uh, good. You've got your pen. It's yeah. the <laughs> remake, reboot, re requel, whatever they're calling it, for The Grudge. I like requel. Requel. Um, which I am I'm quite excited about because mm. it's got a, a very good cast in it. Uh, Andrea Roisbury is a fantastic actress. John Chow. Um, he was great in Searching, Searching yeah. last year, which was really, really good. Uh, Jackie Weaver, just a really, really good cast in this. Uh, the director is one of those up-and-coming horror directors. Like, he's done two small films, and they've both got, like, huge critical acclaim. Um, and, yeah, and it does look like they've transplanted the whole thing to America, because if I remember correctly, the Sarah Michelle... She was an old player, wasn't ones. she? Or, yeah, she yeah, that was yeah. still in... Japan. 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 Yeah, she was a live-in uh, nanny, wasn't she? Yeah, and I thought the first... American Grudge was okay. The second one was oof, quite bad. But what the is, original one is really, really creepy. Just that, like, the little boy in the, uh, thing is just, well, nope. Um, more great signs. I'm in awe today. I'm, I'm really thinking <laughs> of our sound cloud yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, just from the trailer alone, I was like, okay, this looks, this looks decent. It looks like a strong entry. And I've heard... Uh, Friends of mine seen footage of it from, I think it was New York Comic Con back in September, and they said it was really violent, which is big thumbs up. <laughs> right up your street. <laughs> big thumbs up, because if, you, if you don't show away from the violence in a horror film, especially like one like this, which is based around a house, which like is murder. just trying to kill people yeah. because a murder happened there, like, don't pussyfoot around the violence, which it sounds like they haven't done. Um, so yeah, very, very excited for this. Here is a... Hopefully not too scary clip from the trailer <laughs> for you, Owen. Oh, you're very good. I've got my pen. Okay, good. It's like I'm Care sorry. Bears we're going to show for Just, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> Some alternative <laughs> friendly footage for me. Okay. I don't know, Care Bears sounds pretty scary. They can be violent too. Don't make the Care Bears scary. Scare Bears. Take Ooh. a look. Hello, it's Peter Spencer. I'm here about selling the house. Is anyone home? So remind me, the original American version was The Grudge. Yes. Then we had The Grudge 2. Yes. And then, the Japanese one is due on The Grudge. Which took, that was which before. before. Yeah. And then there was The Grudge 3 as well. All uh, very imaginative titles. You hold titles. grudges against us or something? Well, no, I'm just wondering, is this The Grudge 4 or is this The Grudge again? I think it's 
the grudge. They're okay. just they're just and this is us doing starting a new okay. slate. I think I haven't seen it. <laughs> so, True. Yeah, fair I point. I like the fact that it seems like they're working in the serial killer vibe into it too. I got a lot of True yeah. Detective from that trailer. And Seven as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a feeling I got. But and like, also, Raimi's produced it, and the last kind of directing talent was, I think, Fede Alvarez, he found. Mm. And I really like Don't Breathe. Evil Dead remake, yeah, but like, he does, uh, Raimi does have a good eye for finding young horror directors who are quite good and is it. It's through his production company, and he's usually got a decent track record yeah. of uh, kind of finding these these gems of directors. The um, the cast that you mentioned, Andrea Riceborough and Jackie Weaver, are two te- like two unbelievable actors, but can be so terrifying. Yeah, like they're, the way they can just use their face to like yeah. creep you out. Um, so the fact that they both signed up for it is a really good sign as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Damien Bashir. Uh, the Mexican actor who's in there as well, who wears a different kind of mech suit because he's wearing like a, a shirt and tie as well. Um, but he's also uh, a super actor because he's been used more and more like the Hateful Eight, Alien Confident. I knew um, you were going to do well, that. Am I, I was getting, am I getting I was a good mark for no. that? No. no. A good mark for that. He was Come just, on. Do you know what? He didn't mark you down because he wasn't being, he didn't want to interrupt you because he was nice. <laughs> That's the reason why. And there was a little break and he's like, <laughs> mark him down now. I don't think I deserve to mark him down. <laughs> <laughs> Me- Mexu, what Mexu. are you doing? Like, but the thing is, Mexu by itself was funny, but then you ruined it by like, he's a suit. And tie. But just in case anybody didn't. I try too hard. I always try you too always, hard. You come I'm back so to so it. Sorry. I'm going back to it. You can't just leave it alone. Did you see that joke I made back there? It's Did funny. You? Let yeah. me explain why. The pump, okay, Justine yeah. Pumpkin agreed with it. She liked it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's smiling. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Pumpkin. She's Stafford. always smiling at everything. Um, so, I really yeah. lit her up. <laughs> uh, I look forward to this as well. No, you don't. And there's a, uh, no, I do. This no, is the problem. Don't. I do get excited about these, and then I remember I get scared. Yeah, I, I I go, you're you're the person who like is in the queue for the roller coaster, and just as you're about <gasps> to get on, you're like, no, oh, no, 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 no. Hold on, don't say that. I absolutely love roller coasters. But that's a metaphor. No, but, for you at the cinema. But it makes people think I don't like rest, uh, like roller Sca- coasters. You just don't like scary things. I love roller coasters. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> oh, it's out the uh, 3rd of January. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, that's Colm's birthday. Colm, if you're watching, one of my friends, happy birthday. Birthday days. Yeah. Hey, yo, bring them together. <laughs> so and then go to a roller coaster. Perfect. Um, now it's time for the big interview on The Big Review Ski. And this week, Rory, you were over in London recently yeah. for the film festival. The, the London Film Festival. The London, the Film Festival of London. And you uh, chatted a whole bunch of people while you were over there. But sure one did. of them happened to be... Bruce Springsteen. <gasps> yes, this is a friend. Friend. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I Close did. Uh, I got to. I got to shake hands with Bruce. Anyway, oh, I didn't know that. What? Yeah. Which, Which hand? hand? Which one can I touch? My handshake. Touch it. Oh. <laughs> smells oh. like the boss. <laughs> um, Rory smells like the boss. I'm the boss. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. No. So he was over showing a select few people uh, his new. His new documentary, Western Stars, that he co-directed. It's his first time uh, directing anything. So he co-directed it with his uh, lifelong collaborating partner, Thom Zimney. Thom Thom Zimney. Zimney. Okay. Who's directed, like, pretty much anything Springsteen related for the last 20 years or so. Okay. Um, Yeah, so I actually got to sit down with Thom. Uh, Hold on, does he actually pronounce his name Thom? No, it's just, okay, just, just, just T-H-O-M. You're doing a joke. Yeah. Okay. Unlike you, I don't you have to mark explain it. Down. Right, okay. I don't have to explain why it was funny. It. You should so, have explained it. Okay. That's not on me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, um, they had a little green room behind this like secret cinema that's in a very, like, you would never, you would if you walk past the building the cinema's in, you're like, uh, I'd say three people can stand inside there and that's all that there's room for. And you go in, you're like, oh, there's a huge cavern of secret cinema here. And then there was a uh, like a green room behind that again. It was just two of us chatting about how how great how great Bruce is. Um, the yeah, I have like a lot of there's a lot of editorials up on Joe about it at the minute. But the the bit I think people would like the most is him talking about uh, Springsteen's unique connection with Ireland and his Irish fans. Lovely stuff. So there's a little look at Western Stars, the new. Kind of documentary, kind of concert recording mm-hmm. as well uh, with Bruce Springsteen. And there's a little clip then afterwards of his co-director, Mr. Thom Thunley. <laughs> Do you hear my tummy rumbling? I did. Yeah. Same as me. Rory's getting the boat safe. My, my, my thumb, 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 thumb. <laughs> Take a look. Oh, yeah. 
We've got a hundred-year-old barn filled with the best kind of ghosts and spirits. We got to play for a few friends. You never know what's going to happen with new music. I've never, there's there's literally no one else out there, anything we write about Bruce uh, when it goes up on the website, it, it just does phenomenally well. Yeah. Like outrageously, outrageously well. And I'd be very curious to see what it is specifically about Bruce that like garners that reaction from obviously internationally and obviously America loves him too, but like the Irish fans, they're rabid for him. They yeah. are yeah. crazy for him. I, 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 I love... Uh, I worked on uh, the Seeger sessions that we filmed in Ireland, and and I've been to shows there, and it's an amazing experience to watch how that audience connects with Bruce, and also takes on uh, this energy of letting him go deep in the catalog, you know, try try new things. It's 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 wild because. Uh, we've been able to capture it a few times in film and I've been able to experience it as a filmmaker in the audience. And uh, I think he's got a really profound connection to the Irish culture and, mm. and coming home. And uh, I just think of the Seeger Sessions and we, we made a film there and, and uh, live in Dublin. And, and, and it, it, it was extraordinary because the energy that came across from that crowd carried the night. Yeah, and uh, it, it was caught, and uh, it's a place that that everyone comes home from the tour and describes as one of the highlights. For the past twenty years, I've heard about the Dublin show <laughs> tapes. So. This is news to me. I'm going to admit that uh, we've talked about it before, Paul. You're obviously a massive Bruce Springsteen fan, I am indeed. A um, couple of pals who are, worship the ground that he walks on. Uh, I like like his tunes, but I'm not like a diehard fan. But whenever you you're were chatting to, to Tom, I'm so sorry. Whenever you're chatting to him there and he's talking about the Seeger sessions, he's like, well, whenever we were in Ireland doing the Seeger session, I was like, what's the Seeger session? <gasps> I'm sorry, I didn't know what they... And it's a whole live in Dublin yeah. album. It's one of the few albums he recorded which wasn't with the E Street Band. It was a different band behind them, so it was more... You'd actually like it. It's actually It was more orchestral. You don't know me. Band. Well, maybe I would like it, yeah. You came at me hard then, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. just... Uh, yeah. just just because just yeah. you're out of the loop, just because you're a weirdo, you don't like Bruce Springsteen, you don't have to project that onto everyone else. It's Rory who doesn't like him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do like him, I just don't. I'm not, Rory, don't, I like, I'm not in love Why do you hate Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> but like, uh, so you're, where did you get your love of Bruce Springsteen from? Uh, I think actually the first album was like the generic, like, greatest hits my dad have. And then uh, ended up working with someone when I was about 14, 15, and he was a massive fan, like... Went like he could went to, it could be Tom Zimney, <laughs> I don't know. Never got it. No, I did get his name. Uh, but he went to like three nights in the RDS, and after one the first night, he went back and queued and like slept overnight in the RDS. And apparently, there's like a group of fans in Ireland who are like religiously diehard like that. So he was like obsessive. So then he gave me like Born to Run, Darkness on the Edge of Town, Born to USA, all the albums like uh, in Nebraska and all that stuff. And yeah, since then, just a fan. A huge fan, huge fan. But um, in a topsy turvy <laughs> turn of events, this week, instead of Rory reviewing uh, our upcoming horror film, Doctor Sleep, and instead of you reviewing our Bruce Springsteen movie, it's the other way around. So, yeah. Rory, what was Western Stars like? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. I don't think I've so ever just don't don't break don't break Paul's heart. No, no, no. I don't think I've well, I don't think I've ever <laughs> sat down and listened to an entire Springsteen album before. Like from start to finish, um, and this would be the first one that I've heard from start to finish because he played the whole one um, during the thing. So like it's it's going into a barn that he has in his property that's like a hundred years old, and that's where they decided to do the uh, the live performance. And he's just invited a group of like close personal friends, and it's done in such a way that it makes it feel like you are one of the few people he's invited along as well. That's a nice feeling, and he has a. I think it's like a 30-piece orchestra behind them. So it's, uh, I, w I went then went back and listened to the album. It does sound quite different to the album uh, itself. But uh, like they're releasing the film version of the album tracks eventually. Okay. So you will be able to get it. Because Bruce Springsteen needs more money. I was concerned because anyone who has a barn big enough to ho house a concert and cameras on his property <laughs> that he needs to drive to, of course he needs more money. And do the 30-piece orchestra, do they live, they graze... Just in the, the kind of the area around there, what mm. do they do? They live there. He keeps them in the barn. 
Yeah. Yeah. Are you all right? That's my tummy. <laughs> that is so loud. It's yeah. That is so noisy. And put it down to a ghost. We're just I making. Might, I might have to eat this pumpkin. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, sorry, Ms. Stafford. Pumpkin Stafford. Um, yeah. So it, in, intercut with that is is like kind of little short videos and like vignettes about how each song came about or the overarching theme of the West of Stars album, which is which is a, a nice idea in that he uh, is talking about how men and well mostly men uh want a sense of community but also they want to be like on their own uh because they were like oh i love my family but also sometimes i just want to get in this car and drive away uh and he talks a lot about the the mistakes he's made in his past uh he talks a lot a lot about the mistakes he's made in his past, like he's <laughs> never made a mistake in his life, <laughs> like uh, but like a huge amount. And so, sometimes it was very insightful. Like he he says he's like, if you if you loved me at all, I would do everything in my power to to hurt you and push you away. And I was like, oh, oh god. But then other times he'd just be like, I made mistakes and blah blah blah. And it, it just came across a bit like a Levi's ad. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, but. Despite that, I am again not the biggest Brian Springfield fan in the world, but I did still <laughs> love that guy. <laughs> did still like it? Really enjoyed the music. Really enjoyed the kind of the atmosphere he was setting up. He has his wife Patty. Patty, yeah. thank you. Uh, on stage, they have one beautiful song together called "Stones," which was like you can just you can feel the decades of relationship between them uh, as they're performing it. And uh, yeah, it's 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 it was really nice. I oh. I imagine like you'd lose you like you'd be. <laughs> Crying, yeah, <laughs> like losing your that, shit. That I was my it. question because yeah. if you did like it as a non-fan going into mm. it, uh, do, do you think fans? Will I can't imagine it? that they they. But like, I wouldn't say you're going into this and haven't come out and be like, oh, he's revealed something here I didn't already know. Mm. But I'd say you just would enjoy being in his company. Yeah, spending yeah. spending time with him, and he he's real, just kind of chill. Like he's just he's just like, eh, I've I've got mm. my money, I've got my barn, I've got my orchestra, mm. like. Yeah. What? I also so, I, I also love Rory because he got the exclusive that Bruce was going on tour next year as well. From oh that, yeah, so, that's yeah. right. So that's why that's why I love this. That whenever I think of this film now, I'm just going to think Rory got the news that Bruce is out on tour next year. So this is because he kind of hinted at uh, how did that come about? Because the album the, apparently this album is very intimate. It's it's him kind of on his own, the D Street Banner behind him, which he said kind of fed into the idea of making a documentary about it because he didn't want to take it on the road because it's not this bombastic record, but his next one will be. So he said kind of the idea of making a documentary even came from recording the album because it's more intimate and private and reflective, which I presume well, from Rory's view is like the tone of the film as well. So Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. So Western Stars, uh, out now, out this week. Um, so if you're a massive Springsteen fan, you're probably going to go and see it anyway. But if not, uh, worth checking out if you want to mm -hmm. spend some time with the boss himself. Um, our next big review for this week is Stephen King's Doctor Sleep. So slightly... More spooky than Bruce Springsteen in a bar. You don't know that. Well, that's true. But I mean, I, 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 was, mean... I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> like Bruce just seems like a lovely man. Anyway, he couldn't be scary, possibly. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So uh, as we said, this is the follow-up to The Shining, iconic uh, horror film starring Jack Nicholson. And this time around, we've got yes. Oh, Have Roy has a question. Shining? Have I still? No, I haven't seen The Shining yet. What? I know, but it was our it was our big question. Months and months ago, what is one big famous film that everybody's seen that you still haven't I seen? I think you'd be able to handle The Shining. I really think, I think you'd be able to handle The Shining. I've seen bits and pieces. No, is like, come on. I think people build it up more than what... Because when yeah. you watch it young, it makes it a stronger impression, like, oh my God, the horror. But then you watch it again, it's like it's a great character drama, yeah. brilliantly shot, yeah. Yeah. superbly immersive. You'll like it. Yeah, so I was terrified watching Ready Player One whenever they go through the whole Shining sequence. Mm. It's the old lady. The old lady just scares the crap oh. out of me. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you like Dr. Sleep. It's so sexy and then so scary. I can't handle <laughs> those two emotions so close together. I knew you were going to... I, I, I was like, what? he's going to make a sexy joke about this old lady. <laughs> what? Like, it's true. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, so Stephen King's uh, Dr. Sleep starring Ewan McGregor as the grown-up Danny Torrance uh, is hitting our cinemas you this week. You say Danny like that, Danny Torrance. Danny. Uh, so, take a look. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> When I was a kid, there was a place. A dark place. They closed it down and let it rot. But the things that lived there... Hello, Daddy. They come back. Boom! 
Did I scare you? Every scare day. yourself. <laughs> All the time. Um, Paul, Dr. Sleep hit me. I really like this. It's very different than The Shining. I haven't read the book. Where did you read the book, yeah. Shining? Yeah. Or oh, Dr. The Shining. Sleep. Oh, Dr. Sleep. You read I've read the book. Yeah, okay. So Rory knows what's going in. But The Shining book is very different to That's the film. That's true. Well, so. Stephen King didn't like Kubrick's film. I hated it. Because uh, the ending was is different. Spoiler. 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 Explodes. Um, so yes, we pick up... Uh, like 25, 30 years later, and it follows uh, Danny Torrance, who obviously survived The Shining, played by Ian McGregor in this one. Whereas The Shining was kind of more about, on top of all the horror and the gore, basically just about a family falling apart and one man's descent into madness. This is sort of, yeah, there you go. Why don't you point at me? Relatable. This is sort <laughs> I'm of. I'm fine. A character drama on those lines about one man trying to rebuild his life and move on past the horrific events that happened in the Overlook Hotel. And for a large part of it, it really works because it, it doesn't try to be The Shining because nothing can be The Shining. It's, it's a standalone film. It's, it's, it's wonderful on its own. Not just a great horror, it's, it's a great film. Um, McGregor sells it really well, the kind of damaged, damaged character that Danny Torrance was. Um, obviously, he still has the ability to shine, but what brings him back in, he's kind of blocked it all off because, you know, the horrible past he has. He doesn't want to dwell on this wonderful ability he has. But... There's a cult called, uh, I think it's, it's Devil's Knot, um, led by uh, Rebecca Ferguson's character, the wonderfully top-hatted Rebecca Ferguson we see in the trailer. Somehow. Who um, basically feed off the souls and the life energy of, of people. Kids have this kind of like inner lightness. Um, they kind of prey on them as well. And there's a few wonderfully creepy scenes in it. But obviously the kids that shine... Uh, we live in a world where not more than one character shines, which you saw in the first one. Uh, they're like the prize assets they want to take because it sustains their life. Basically, the horror is there's one. It's the opening scene is so creepy without using blood or or gore or anything like that. Just these like adults moving in on this innocent. Like there's a real haunting kind of dread tone to it, um, which you wouldn't be surprised to know. Mike Flanagan directed this, who did uh, Oculus and a really good Hush on Netflix, but he's also more famous now for The Haunting Hill House. So the, if you watch that, you'll know that he's a very good director at creating mood and tone for horror without going overtly graphy, graphic or gory. And there are moments in Doctor Sleep that are quite good. But then there are moments that I feel like it just you just need a few more jumps and a few more scares. There was only actually one sequence I can picture um, before we get to the Overlook that actually has blood in it. Like, like really, like there's, obviously there's like abduction and stuff like that, which is horrific in itself. But if you're looking for like overt gore and stuff, it's not really that type of film. This is more like a slow burning character film. Um, but but Shining the, didn't really have a gore. No, movie, not yeah. really. No, until it kind of the last last 30, 40 minutes. There was obviously the elevator sequence. Yeah. But like you referenced the old lady. Um, sexy old lady. Sexy old lady. Yeah. That's there and everything. Give her her full a, name. It's important. Yeah. yeah. But the film kind of, it's, it's, it's a weird kind of mishmash of genres because in one way it's a road trip because Ewan McGregor finds this young girl who shines and she's the target of the, the group. You mentioned the cult. So he has to feel this obligation to protect her because obviously Danny went through all this horrific stuff and he knows exactly what they'll do. So one part, it's a road trip to get there. Another part, it's kind of like a, kind of like a, a cop thriller, kind of like to find the, this person, this other child that's abducted. And then as we saw heavily teased in the trailer, we get to the Overlook Hotel. And when we get to the Overlook, the closest thing I can remind of is like watching Avengers Endgame and seeing all the Easter eggs and the throwback oh, and the yeah. calls. Yeah. I got such a buzz off that. Like if you watch The Shining, you'll love as soon as you get there. Even before we get there, there's certain characters, fans of the original will know, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but like this conversation is like, oh, that's so cool. And, but when you get to the Overlook, even so, something as small as seeing that carpet gave me like, like goosebumps. We should get that carpet for in here, actually, as well. It would really yeah. pull the room together. Um, but by, but because it's about two and a half hours long, so I think it's it's a bit long, and there's parts where you're like, I need I need a jump or I need a scare. But if you're invested in in the characters, which McGregor is quite good, I can play that character really well. You go along with it, and if you go along with it, by the time you get to the overlook, you're like, oh, it just amps up a bit, and like stuff from like the axe to like the the the, the carpet to just the imagery of it, because yeah. it's shining is such a beautiful looking film, and you, even though if you've never seen it, you have seen it because it's been pastiche yeah. and it's part of pop culture so much. But Flanagan's very clever in how he shoots it, and like it's almost like shot for shot what Kubrick did. So he did such a, the production design is beautiful when you get into it. But um, yeah, uh, it's not it's not perfect, 
it's not The Shining, but I think it's good that it doesn't try to be Shining because nothing can be it. Yeah. It's its own film. But by the time it does kind of get into the, the throwbacks and the callbacks, you're with it. And I left the cinema like, oh my God, that was so cool. Because like, oh, that's the door and that's the, that's the accent. Like, I left on a bit of a horror buzz now, to be honest. So Brilliant. definitely worth checking out, yeah. Happy days. Can I ask a question? Is it a spoiler uh, to ask about the title, Doctor Sleep? Like, you know, in terms of what that means? Because no, no, I'm no, not no. getting anything from no, because, um, the trailer of what it is. Because McGregor's character's always had this ability to kind of uh, to shine. He's uh, kind of had a sixth sense, a different horror film to know when people are kind of close to death, when they're shine, their inner kind of light and their soul kind of diminishes. Yeah. So he's kind of been drawn to like death and he kind of gives these uh, euthanasia speeches like, oh, don't worry, death's not that bad. So he's kind of drawn to people and kind of comforts them into right, a long okay. sleep. So that's how he's like, and he works in a, in a home for like uh, a, uh, uh, he works in a, a nursing home. So, like, a lot of older people are dying. So, like, yeah. yeah. Sorry, we're not laughing at older people dying in a nursing home. That's it's not what it is. There's, like, a weird it's spooky a ghost. beep yeah. that's happening. Yeah, I don't know if the audience can hear that. <gasps> my shine. closer. My shine's about yeah. to die. It's getting closer and faster. Do you know what it sounds like? It sounds like somebody, whenever you used to play a recorder, but, like, when you used to use your nose, so you don't really control it, <laughs> and you're just like, That's yeah. fun. Classic. Anyway, we're going to, as the creepy little girl <laughs> comes closer with her recorder nose blowing. Um, that's great. One thing about uh, Rebecca Ferguson. Yeah. I love her in everything. Uh, she's brilliant in most recent Mission Impossible film, Fallout. Yes. And what was one before that? Was it Ghost Protocol? Anyway, she's excellent in those action films. She was... Uh, she was grand, like solid in uh, the hilarious uh, Snowman. With Michael Fassbender, oh, yeah. which is what a film. Oh, yeah. uh, and then you've also got her doing uh, musicals as well in The Greatest Showman. So she's just trying everything. Mm. But brilliant to see her going into a dark, kind of creepy, scary role in mm. this one as well. I think she, she, no, no offense, but I think she has a face that lends itself quite well to just being creepy if she just yeah. puts her mm. expression on. Especially with that top hat on. She's just definitely tell. the most memorable new character in okay. this. Yeah, I don't know how it's written in the book, but like she imbues the character like she's kooky okay. but there is a, a hint of menace there um, so yeah she's uh, she's trying out different things now so yeah okay. she's good good stuff um, no you looking forward to it then Rory Absolutely. horror fan brilliant <laughs> happy days it was horror so so <laughs> yes box tape not all horror though sorted uh, okay so that's Doctor Sleep which is out in Omniplex cinemas uh, this week as well so do go and check it out after you've seen Western Stars as well double bill don't work at a double bill I mean sure yeah Go for it. Uh, and our final release for review this week is the brand new Ken Loach film, which is Sorry We Missed You, which I'm going to presume is not a barrel of laughs, but let's just take a look just to, just, just to make sure. Okay. You name it, I've done it. Concreting, plumbing. Is that you two? I've done it all. So why'd you give it up? It's just gone from job to job. There's always someone in the back, isn't there? Come on, we've got time to make up. Let's go. I'd rather work on my own now and be my own boss. Let's just get a few things straight at the start, though, shall we? Hi, Rosie. Wake up. Dad will go mental if you miss school again. Now, if you oh, don't God. move, then we're going to get a ticket. Oh, Rosie. It's your f***ing about laugh. You don't work for us. You work with us. So you're out of contract to get paid for the visits? Keep this happy. Stop it, stop it. Ah, oh, yes! We track every parcel, don't we? To the front door and the back door. Even if you put one in the garden shed, they know where it lands. Fucking hell! Two dogs out there with massive teeth. I think it's stuck a chunk out of my ass. Yep, I suspected not a barrel of laughs. Uh, so, Paul, Ken Loach, uh, brilliant director. Even though he dislikes Marvel films, we'll not get into that whole debate. Just oh. like whatever films you like. Don't watch grand. both. Do I like that mean? you don't want to get into that debate. But let's open but like, it. But no, it's just like, like, like those films, like those films. Depends what mood you're in. Do you know what I mean? I'd say it's just because number one wants Ken Loach's <laughs> Marvel movie. Marvel I would love movie. to see that. Yeah. Is this a superhero movie? It is not a superhero film, but there are characters that do extraordinary feats to look after their children. And I'm sure as a parent yourself, like the uh, Herculean efforts that a mom and dad go to provide and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing this, like, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at me here. Owen gets, you kids. Owen gets so you. much money from this. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's got his wallets just bursting out with yeah, 50s yeah, there right now. Yeah. Um, no, it's very, very good. It's, uh, it's not the easiest film to watch, 
but it's it's very like I Daniel Blake in that in that um kind of righteous anger and and necessary urgency to make. Uh, it's about the zero hour uh, economy and the, the sorry the gig economy zero hour contracts about a father who gets a van and basically has to deliver parcels for this type of Amazon company and basically just how workers' rights are exploited and how he constantly has to work 24-7 to make ends meet. And also his wife, um, Abby, is a carer and um, kind of it's a shocking indictment of the, the healthcare system. Um, she has to work to the bone as well to look after her kids and because they're working so much, they don't get to spend time with their kids and how the kind of family unit, how that impacts it. Um, but uh, it's very, very good. I'm not in a, like a lot of Ken Loach's films, I'd urge people to check them out. I'm not in a rush to see it again, but it is very timely, very important film. Um, I enjoyed it. It's really well acted. We'll talk more about it next week because we have the writer who came in to talk to us, Paul Laverty, who uh, wrote an awful lot of Ken Loach's films, wrote The Wind of Shakes to Barley, wrote I, Daniel Blake. So uh, there's a good chat. We, we had a good chat there. It's up on our YouTube. Um, but no, definitely check it out if you want a powerful... Um, drama that kind of makes you tap into the human condition, but um, it will not. It's not a superhero film, and okay. you will not be laughing all the way through okay. it. Do I need to bring the tissues? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. There's one scene in particular that will break your heart, um, but it's okay. uh, it's very very good. Okay. Can, it's vintage Ken Loach. Okay, what are you shaking your head for, I just, Rory? I just. Misery, want, it's just misery porn. It's just misery porn. No, oh, you're, it's not, you're not it's a, a fan then, no, though. It's a, I just don't care for, oh, no, like, it's for like putting yourself through that. Like, going, like I'm going to go to the cinema and sit it's down. Yeah. It's escapism. Like, Did you like no. I, Daniel Blake? No. Oh, man. Like, I appreciated it. I was like, yeah, yeah, act well, acted well, directed. <laughs> me, I never want to see that again. <laughs> no, sorry. So that's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's like, I was like, oh, no. I, I just, it's so. It's him, and who's the other one? Mike Lee. Yeah. Lighten up. I. As I said to Paul Everly, my override impression after coming out, I wanted to call my dad just to like just to check in on him because he like to see. That's another thing I don't want to. And it, it made me it made me feel things. So if it made me who's yeah, dead well, inside feel true. stuff, that's true. Then it definitely then other, it might connect to other people. That's an incredible achievement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so well done, Ken Loach. Um, okay, so sorry we missed you. Uh, our third release that's out this week as well. So um, plenty to choose from. So you've got. Misery porn. <laughs> Misery porn. Uh, you've got uh, porn. brand new horror porn and, and Bruce Springsteen, Springsteen porn. porn. Perfect. You're sorted. Don't Google any of those <laughs> items. Please do not. Um, okay. Happy days. All uh, great reviews. And as you said, Paul, we're going to have Paul Laverty. Laverty. Talked a lot on about the, the when the shakes to barely working with Ken Loach. Uh, we actually talked a bit about the superhero stuff as well. So, oh, right. so it's up okay. there on Joe at the moment. Brilliant. Happy days. Uh, so you can tune in to next week's show for more of that as well. Now it's time for competition on the Big Review Ski. And as ever, we have tickets to give away uh, to Omniplex Cinemas. Um, so uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. So we had last week's high clue. If we can bring it up on screen, please. It was Blonde Brunette for June, Hurt by Pa Patrick's Judgment, Christ Sings Like a Bird. And again, Stags fans, there's a lot of people got this right. So mm. I want to say congratulations to Simone C. Richardson. The C is important. I don't know why. What do you think the C stands for? C, I got it right. Nice. Congratulations, Simone. <laughs> uh, she also used hashtag high clue, so it's nice to support that there Trending. as well. So uh, you'll be getting yourself some free Omniplex tickets as well. And Richie Whelan. Richie, I don't know what your middle name starts with. I'm going to go with M. What do you think the M stands for? Mystery. As well. <laughs> now on to this week's. <laughs> so the oh the answer for last week's oh, one yeah, first of yeah. all. So, well, um, well there it is. Oh there it is it's up on screen. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. It's a film Dewey Cox. It's a, it's a film that Dewey Cox can't. Can't. Yeah. 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 yeah, keep it together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So blondes, brunette for June, hurt by Pat Patrick's judgment. Christ sings like a bird is of course walk the line. Uh, the Johnny Cash, uh, June Carter. Uh, kind of biopic starring Joaquin Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon. Uh, Blonde Brunette for June. That was a reference to Reese Witherspoon. Blonde, she's a star of Legally Blonde. Yes. She goes brunette, because uh, she's traditionally blonde anyway, uh, to play June in the film. Yes, she does. All good. Happy yes, enough with yes, that one? Yes. The middle line Hurt by Pa Patrick's Judgment. So Hurt is the famous Johnny Cash song. Uh, Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Technically. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Okay. Johnny, yeah. Johnny famous, Cash, Johnny Cash sing, cover. famously the lead singer of Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Uh, hurt by Pa Patrick's Judgment. Uh, his pa, his dad, is played by Robert Patrick uh, in the movie. And throughout the movie, 
his dad is judging him constantly and uh, basically just grinding him down and that's the reason he turns to drink and drugs and he's all over the shop and him and his dad have it out as well. Um, but uh, yeah, his dad's judgment because Robert Patrick as well was the star Scary of... Scary man. T, uh, T2. He was the T-1000 in mm. Terminator Judgment Day. So that's there. And the final line, Christ sings like a bird. Joaquin Phoenix played Jesus H. Christ. What do you think the H stands for? Jesus. Homer. Uh, in Mary Magdalene, which was released Halloween. last year. Um, Halloween. <laughs> Jesus, Halloween, Christ. Um, uh, sings like a bird. Uh, he's obviously he's an amazing singer in the film. And his name is Joaquin Phoenix, which is a type of bird as well. So there Link, it is. Plus he's a jailbird. And he's a jailbird. Unbelievable. <gasps> So uh, that was Walk the Line. That was last week's I don't one. know why, but when you said blonde, I was just thinking, have you ever bent, did the bend and snap in that film? Can you no, do it? no. Do you want to try it now? No. Okay. I was just wondering about you. No, we'll try and I like the lady you asked next. me if I could do it, because you both oh, Rory, I definitely know you. Rory, can you do the bend and snap? <laughs> Absolutely. Go. Yeah. No. Okay. You'll hurt the viewers. <laughs> go now. No. No. How about three? No. Two. No. One. No. Go. No. No, okay. Bend and snap off. So you have to be, have to be standing for it anyway. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Well, you, no, it'll be out of, out of camera. Okay, fine, fair enough. This outtakes. week's high clue. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, so we've got more Omni Flex tickets up for grabs. So here it is. It's Paul's Pals Fight in Pub. This is my Red. life. <laughs> <laughs> this was last night. This is literally it. Yeah. <laughs> Red. My weekend. Red Dead Redemption with Liz. Funky flatmate malls. So the three lines again. Paul's pals fight in pub. Oh, got it. Yeah. Red Dead Redemption with Liz. Funky flatmate malls. <coughs> uh, so everybody who's listening, Paul's is P-A-U-L apostrophe S. It may or not be, uh, may or may not be Paul Murr. Who knows? Uh, I mean, that, line, that hint would make me think yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> the middle line is Red Dead Redemption with Liz. And Red is R-E-D, not R-E-A-D. Do you know any Liz's? <laughs> yeah. Do I know Liz? I don't think... Oh, I do, Elizabeth. actually. I do know Elizabeth. Elisa. Yes, I do. Oh, she was one of my exes. I do have an ex on oh, the league, okay. at least. So Redemption <gasps> with yeah, Liz. That Redemption. all makes sense. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, We're going to go sense. back with her. Oh, oh man. <laughs> I didn't, oh, will you mend that well? Apparently well, well, she's <laughs> dead, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Was my last flatmate funky? Uh, yeah, it was pretty funky. It was pretty yeah. funky. Yeah. Okay, okay. Weekend of Pauls. That's what we call yeah. Don't so, ever see uh, that, though. <laughs> So that's uh, this week's high clue. Uh, so best luck with that. You can enter. We'll put it up on all social media as well. Every single piece of social media. <laughs> and uh, it'll be up on Joe. TikTok, so MSN, <laughs> yeah, Tebow. Exactly. MySpace, yeah. it's all there. All them. Um, so yeah, good luck with that. And that pretty much wraps it up for this week. Uh, as we said, we're going to have Paul Laverty up on the show next week. And we're going to be reviewing The Irishman. <gasps> yeah. Which is We've unbelievable. a good bit to do next week. Jammers. So we, we also better. have Bill Condon on. Bill Condon as well. Yeah. Why is he on? He directed The Good Lair. Right. Which we're reviewing. Class, Bill. Look forward to seeing you. Happy days. Do you know who Bill Condon is? Yeah, I interviewed him for Beauty and the Beast as well. So sorry, I just didn't know I why he was I coming should have back. told him. I was how, like, did oh. your, how did your brain, like, did, you, did the light switch there in that one second there when you asked where you're at? You're like, I know him, Bill Condon. No, yeah. I didn't know why he was coming on. It's oh. like, uh, we've got Steven Spielberg on. Why is Steven Spielberg on? Who's he? He's just, just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. just hanging around. We need to see uh, more movies, man. <laughs> so Paul Laverty, <laughs> The Irishman, they're both coming up. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the show. Oh, and we're sending... Thoughts and prayers to Justine Stafford this week. Not the pumpkin version, the real one as well. Uh, she's undergoing a serious medical procedure uh, this week to have her removed from uh, a copy of Supersonic, a DVD. It's like it's actually, she's glued it to her hand because she loves that film so goddamn much. So look after yourself, Justine, all right? And uh, mech suit, because he's Mexican and he was wearing... He was wearing the shirt. Oh, we're going to have no one watching us next week. Me. See you later. Oh, we'll have no say one. goodbye. Say goodbye. I'm saying goodbye to you. I'm goodbye. really goodbye. sorry for goodbye. all and everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Love yeah. you all. Happy Halloween. Go to Derry for Halloween. See you.